I've never seen a beach like that in England before. Never, ever, ever. It's been voted the seventh best beach in the world. You know when you go into the tourist offices and yeah. they have a picture of like a perfect beach, don't they? It's like that picture. We also found out when we were down there, quite quickly, that it's a nudist beach. Welcome back to the channel. We're Janine and Liam Day, a married couple who are attempting, despite all the challenges we are facing, to live and travel full time in our converted removals truck camper van in the UK. We are currently doing an almost full circular route of mainland Britain, starting and ending in Kent. Last week we continued our journey through Cornwall, stopping at Falmouth, Port Flevin and Prey Sands. This week we are heading west along the south coast of Cornwall, where we find not only Cornwall's best beach, but one of the best beaches in the world, which also happens to be a nudist beach. Things are heating up, so hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and let's see what adventures we go on this week in Morgan, our removals van. Good morning. We are still in Pra Sands, Prey Sands, I think it's called actually. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, which is where we left you last time. Uh, it's been, it's going to be quite difficult to leave here because it's so nice. It's such a good park up. It's got everything that you need, um, and they want you to stay here as well. It's, it's just amazing. Anyway, we are going to move on. It's going to be the hottest day of the year today, apparently. Um, so that should be interesting. Uh, we're going to go westwards, and hopefully in this video, we're going to try and loop round the, the boot, the tip of Cornwall, right onto the north coast um, it's something that I'm dreading a little bit because I know how narrow and windy those roads are and it might not be possible so uh, if we don't make it then you know apologies for that but we're gonna give it a bloody good go anyway also something exciting in this video that we wanted to show you is for the first time ever we're gonna show you um, little bits and updates and an honest review of our electronic system in this van. As you know, we've got lithium batteries and uh, we've got Victron electronics and we've got awesome solar. And today we're gonna to be completely transparent and honest about how we feel about them and give you little updates through the video and show you how we live off grid full time without ever needing to plug into uh, to electricity, hopefully. Okay, so Liam is going to the toilets, um, which is just literally around the corner. I'm gonna go and say goodbye to this awesome beach for one last time. Goodbye beautiful beach. As you can see it's absolutely massive and it's still quite early in the morning. It's starting to get busy because it's the hottest day of the year so far so it's gonna be real busy here later. Um, but this spot here, this row at the front, we like to call Millionaire's Row because it is so popular. It's like the top dog of parking spaces because you get the view of the beach. This row, Millionaire's Row, is very very difficult to get a spot. You have to be here first thing and you have to wait for someone to leave and when they leave you have to nip in really quickly. But anyway, yeah, goodbye beautiful gorgeous beach. First up we're feeling like a little brunch in, in a nice Cornish cafe and there's a vegetarian coffee house only 10 minute drive from here that we're gonna go and check out we've never been to before. And then after that, the winds are gonna die down just a tiny bit and we're gonna to go to an epic, 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 must see, can't leave without seeing it location. We set off and made our way to a small coastal town called Marizian, famously known for its castle on a hill out in the sea. find it quite amazing how beautiful some places can be you can just rock up somewhere and just be go round a corner and just see the most beautiful landscape 
um, and that's exactly what this place feels like. We headed off to find ourselves some breakfast from the town, noticing how tropical this place looks. We found a takeaway cafe and ordered some flapjacks and coffees, then headed off to the harbour to chill in the sun. So we just sat here drinking our coffee, um, looking at St Michael's Mound. We were actually going to go over there, but it looks like the tide is coming in now, like literally just coming in. People are starting to paddle through the water. Um, in fact, there's two people stuck. Seriously? Can you see them? Yeah, they're turning back. Oh, they're turning, what, on the island? On this side as well, they're turning back as well. Okay, so there's two people stuck. They're not stuck out at sea, so don't worry. They're stuck on the island now. Um, and they've had to turn around and go back on the island. So they're stuck there until the tide goes out again. They're stuck there for hours. I do hope there's um, it's gotta be at least a cafe like five, or something. Yeah, over there. five or six hours or something. Oh my God, how awful. I have to say, this has to be one of the coolest looking things ever. This is why you come to places like England on a holiday. Because you come across things like this, which is just madness. <laughs> it reminds me of passing um, in Northumberland going onto Holy Island, doesn't it you? Yeah, you're gonna attempt it. Go, just keep an eye on my flip-flops, I don't wanna lose them. I'll wait here. All right. Don't go all the way across though. No, 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 no. How beautiful is this? It's like a crystal clear water path all the way to a castle on a hill. It's like a fairy tale. It's just so nice. Even the path is like cobbled brick. And yeah, it's just so beautiful. The tide's literally coming in so fast. We were about a minute ago, we all stood right over there where, where those people were, my God. It is coming in so quick. This chap here says it's going to be swimming ter territory very soon to get across there. He said he, got, he had their one chance to get back over and they, they just took it. Okay, so we're just walking back to the van, but I just wanted to show you. Over there, the city that you can see in the distance is Penzance. We're going to bypass all of that and go around the corner, around the edge and do like a little road trip around there. So we're going to bypass Penzance because it's a lovely hot day today and it's a busy city and we just don't fancy it. We hopped back in the van and headed to a place called Treen, a place we missed out the last time we came to Cornwall due to terrible weather. We were so gutted to miss out such a huge part of Cornwall, so for it to be the hottest day of the year made it all the more exciting. We headed off stopping at a Morrison's on the way. Yeah. So that's the shopping done. Now we are heading towards Land's End. We're going to go through Penzance, but we're going to stop off at the Porth Kernow area. So this part of Cornwall now that we're entering and that we're in is really sparse. You know, we're so close to Land's End. And until we get back round to the north of Cornwall, so to your St Ives area and all those amazing surf beaches, we're going to be hard pushed to find anywhere to wild camp. And we know that because there isn't much here. There's the odd lay-by on busy roads but we don't particularly want to do that if we can help it. So we are prepared for the fact that there isn't many places to wild camp from now on until we get around to the northern bit, which is why we're sort of probably going to get around there tomorrow, hopefully, fingers crossed, around the Land's End bit. But yeah, once again, I'm still quite nervous about it because we did that trip in Frida last time and she, Frida was a lot smaller, a small Ford Transit. And now we've got this big removals van, so yeah. I'm going to try and relax today and tomorrow we'll tackle that. Knowing that there are not that many wild camping spots around the area, we headed for a car park which allows overnight parking. Liam went to pay for the parking whilst I sorted out the shopping and made us both some wraps. We sat in the front seats to eat it as it was so hot in the van. So that was an awesome lunch. Um, I'm keeping quiet here because there's so many people just sort of chilling out and it's got a really calm vibe here. So um, anyway, we're going to head out and we're going to a place called Pen... What is it? Pedden Vounder. Pedden Vounder. Is that a beach? It's a beach. It's supposed to be an amazing beach. Okay, so we're going to the beach.
desperate to get down there. <laughs> Too much, I'm in absolute shock. I can't believe that it's just like one gigantic swimming pool. Uh, I'm actually in shock. That is like, I've never seen a beach like that in England before. Never, ever, ever have I seen anything like that in England. It is just insane. <sighs> Someone just walked past and said, it's been voted the seventh best beach in the world. That one. Wow. And, and yeah, and you think you look at it and you think, yeah, surely it's got to be in the at least the top five in the yeah. world. Yeah, <laughs> hope seven's doing it in injustice. That is the 100% the nicest beach I've seen in this country. Is it you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Not seen anything like that before. <laughs> it is just ridiculously nice. Pinch me because this is definitely not England, and the waters are completely turquoise and see-through. Access to this beach is a little bit tricky. You have to climb over some boulders and some rocks which are a little bit slippy. So we're just gonna get down carefully and try and make it down without any injuries now. So I've put the camera down if I'm so, uh, so I'm holding up the camera. I'm gonna have to put it away now. We continued our journey down the very steep coastal path, definitely not for the faint-hearted, and made our way to the beautiful beach. Wow, I've just stopped scrambling down to have a look and oh my god. You know when you go into the tourist like offices, offices and yeah. they have a picture of like a perfect beach, don't they? It's like that picture. Except they're usually in Spain and Greece. Our next challenge. I reckon it's down there. It's actually quite confusing <laughs> and, and extremely dangerous, which is, you know. Always a bit of fun. Upon arrival to the beach, it quickly became apparent that this was very much a nudist beach. We unknowingly walked into the heart of the nudist area. To respect the people, we put the camera away and enjoyed our time relaxing on this majestic beach, realising that sometimes some things need to remain a mystery, and this was certainly one of those times. Obviously this is paradise, but we have not come across any access to a beach that's as bad as this one. <laughs> it's, the, it's literally rock climbing to get up and down and off this beach. So it's not for the faint-hearted, but lots of people do it still, so it's, it's doable. Um, and yeah, I'm about to go up it in a second to get off it, but coming down was probably a bit harder than going up. So we've just spent half a day on that beach, and because when you've gone to all that effort to get down there, then why not? Um, we also found out when we were down there quite quickly that it's a nudist beach, so. Um, we didn't get to film too much down there just to respect people's privacy and stuff like that. But take our word for it, it's probably England's best kept secret. Um, I, we have not seen a beach like that ever before. The waters are crystal clear and shallow up to about your, to your chest, so far out, so that no rocks or anything, it's just stunning. Um, never forget that. We walked along the cliff to another beach called Porth Kerno, which was absolutely stunning too. We spotted some steps carved out of the rocks and decided to check them out. It became clear that the steps led to an outdoor historical theatre, which we couldn't get access or close to. It's yet another mystery of this part of Cornwall. Feeling tired and hot, we decided to head back to the van via the road. It was a long hot walk back and we were getting thirsty. Oh my God, we have just done like a walk lasting about 40 minutes. Is it about 40 well, minutes? Well, if you count it from the beach, it's about an hour. About an hour yeah. walk and it's so hot and it's up and down as well. So we know that there's a pub up here. The local pub is calling, the local <laughs> pub is calling. Tis the season, it's always the real thing. <laughs> so yeah, Liam's excited. A vegan halloumi burger, which is extraordinary. We was here last year and they didn't, they didn't have, I don't think they had, we ate chips here last year, didn't we? Yeah. I've had a long walk today and all that sunshine, a pint of cider in this, spot on. You know it's not actually cold. I'm absolutely freezing. It's because your sun's fricking. Is that what it is? Could be. I'm so cold. I feel like putting my, my joggers in a hoodie on. <laughs> Oh, back in the van now. It's so toasty and warm in here, um, which is probably on a normal day, I'd be saying it's too hot, but today 
because I'm so cold it's nice and warm but I'm gonna get in the shower anyway wash off all this sun cream um, and hopefully warm up a bit Okay, it's night time now. Janine's had a shower, I've had a shower, washing off all that beach off us. Um, we've also got lights running, we've had a fan running all evening, we've got a fridge that runs all the time, it's a big 130 litre fridge that's running all the time. Hot water um, from the boiler for the shower, hot water for everything else, igniter for the teas. We're also charging laptops and phones and battery packs all the time. And this is what the electronics is doing. Considering that we've not had solar now for probably what, maybe two or three hours, um, like full solar, probably for four or five hours. So we've not had any topping up of, of heat, uh, of solar or any power. So if we look at our Victron app, this app is brilliant because it tells us exactly what is happening with, the, with our batteries, how much juice our batteries have got in it. And our lithium, EcoTree lithium batteries right now before we go to bed are, is on 86%. So we know that since we've not had any solar topping up uh, and what have you, that our batteries are still retaining 86% of charge from solar and from the alternator, from driving and what have you. So this is really, really good. This is very, very good stuff. This means that we are in a good place and we don't have to worry falling asleep. When it drops below 50%, that's when you've probably got to be worrying when you fall asleep or just start a bit concerned because you don't want to wake up with no power. The good thing about EcoTree lithium batteries, the ones that we've got, is if, let's say, there was a fall or we didn't have enough power and they dropped to zero, it still wouldn't ruin the batteries. I think you can drop them, you know, ridiculous amounts of times, hundreds, maybe thousands of times, they can go to zero, where lead batteries you don't want to be doing that at all really. Once or twice you probably get away with. So the battery power on these things is really, really good. We're going to fall asleep now with 86% of battery and we're going to look at it again in the morning. I'm also going to do a 24 hour thing from now on and show you what the state of the batteries are doing throughout the day and what the solar is doing as well. And do we need to go to a campsite to charge up? Probably not, but I'm going to be transparent with it and show you anyway. But for right now, we've got 85% worth of batteries before bed. And our solar, I'm just going to look, we've got a history on here, hold on, 1.74 kilowatts, which isn't huge actually, which means that the solar panels are probably dirty or there's something on them or that we've been in shade at some point today. So I need to look at that because yesterday we hit full solar charge for the whole day. Today we didn't. Either way, we've got a really nice, almost full battery, regardless of how many things are going off. So it's a big, big win for lithium batteries today. We'll have an update for tomorrow on the rest of it. We made ourselves a cup of tea before calling it a night. Well, in my absence, I'll be surely missing you. I've been Good morning, everyone. Today we have woken up in this beautiful car park <laughs> and it is it's a beautiful car park um, it's not actually a campsite um, it's more like an air really than a campsite it costs 10 pounds to stay for one night um, and yeah and they take a card machine you're in the middle of nowhere here so it's actually really good that they accept card machine although if I came back I would bring cash just in case um, and there are some toilets here which cost 20p to use and a little cafe as well so it's actually really nice and the location of it is just perfect it's a walk away from that beautiful beach that we went to yesterday um, and there's loads of other beaches around you just got to find them but for now we're gonna hit the road and go on this little road trip that we've got planned good morning so we are up it's seven o'clock in the morning we are about to leave we are doing today, this is the drive I've been most nervous about in the whole of our trip through Cornwall so far. It's got looping round from the south coast to the north coast going around Land's End. It is renowned for being tight and narrow and windy. Many people who live round here have said the narrowness we should be fine with, it's just that it's windy. So we need, we're picking a time where hopefully 
There's going to be less cars on the road. Um, it's definitely outside of summer holiday season, so with that should help as well. I probably wouldn't attempt it when the kids break up from school. But we're going to go and give it a go anyway. Hopefully we might get a chance to go and see Senen Cove. Senen Cove is really, really nice. Um, and we've never done it this way around before, and we've never done it in a vehicle this big, for, big, big before. So wish us luck. Uh, just checking the state of the electronics this morning, as I said we would. Uh, as you remember, before bed, it was at 85% or around about there. The state of the batteries were 85%. Woken up this morning at 7 o'clock and it's now 65%. So during the night, we've used only 20% of those batteries. That isn't bad, considering we've had laptops on charge all night, we've had phones on charge all night, and we've had the fridge uh, going all night, and we used those showers before bed as well. So we've had a lot of use of the power so far. 65% is a really good number still, especially on a summer's day like today at seven o'clock in the morning where we're already getting solar power coming through and charging those batteries, topping those batteries back up. The good thing about lithium, as I said yesterday, was that you can you can drop them all the way down to nothing and they will you can recharge them again. I think a few thousand times. So it doesn't matter if we, in the winter, if we do drop below that. And it, well, I'm gonna do another one of these videos in the winter to show you, but uh, for now, we don't have to worry. It's absolutely fine. 20% worth of batteries. We could do, with no solar whatsoever, we could do another um, evening here. No worries. Another two evening, possibly. If we were a bit more sort of conservative with the appliances that we're using, we probably could do another few evenings. So it's absolutely no worries whatsoever. The drive alone today will charge up the batteries to full. The DC to DC, the alternator charging up the battery. So that's also really efficient. That's the Victron part of it. It will just It's just really, really good. The lithium batteries, the way that they come into it is that they just hold that power really well. They've got, we've got 220 amp hours of battery, so we've just got more than enough uh, juice and power for what, everything that we need. So that's amazing. Um, in Frida, our Ford Transit, we had, uh, I think it was like a, I can't remember how many amp hours, about 100 amp hours of lead battery. Every morning, whether it was in summer or not, we would have to wake up and go, don't charge anything, stop charging everything, uh, we need to drive to charge it up or we need solar straight away. It was always a concern more in the transit than it is in this. In this, so far, we've not had to worry. We've never gone, right, we need to get to a campsite and charge up ever so far in about three months of being in this van. So anyway, I'm, we're gonna do some driving and I'm gonna show you the state of charge later on, um, but we've got a full bit of solar today and Let's see what happens. Feeling happy with our energy in the van, we hit the road once more. This time to head to Land's End to check out the famous sign and get a picture underneath it. Having been here before, but without seeing the sign, we were on a mission to find it. It cost a whopping £10.50 to park for the day, even if you're only there for a short time. We reluctantly paid and headed to the sign. I think it is love, so I try to hold on. You, put... you can't get close to it. Have to pay. You do? Do you? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, if you want like a professional, you've got to get a professional photograph. It's basically. Yeah. What a car this is. Oh, yeah. Get a picture by the gate anyway. Yeah. I keep hearing your steps in the hallway. And the we grabbed a quick snap in front of the sign and obviously didn't leave Morgan out either before getting back on the road to continue the road trip, this time heading to a beautiful beach called Senan Cove. We parked at the car park on the cliff and walked down. The beach is looking absolutely stunning. I'm not tall enough to really see over this hedge in front of me, but oh my God, it from what I can see is like blue turquoise water, really white sand. Um, and then in the distance really dark like navy blue um, from the like deep blue sea and uh, yeah it's just stunning I can't wait to get down there now but what we're talking about here is incredible white sandy beaches and then what looks like the biggest infinity pool you've ever seen in your life crystal clear turquoise blue waters and it's freaking England and we're just getting tiny glimpses of paradise all the way down this hill there's like little windows it's like oh my god oh my god oh my god we headed down, grabbing a coffee from the beach cafe. Possibly the nicest views we've ever seen from an English cafe. How incredible is this place? I am so shocked. We have been here before, but the tide was right in and it wasn't a nice day. But coming here on a nice day, tides out, the sea looks stunning. It is just 
like paradise. I can see what everyone was talking about now. Before I couldn't, I didn't quite understand it, but now it is insanely beautiful. We've had a really, really nice time down here. We've spent a bit of time down here chilling out uh, because it's completely different to the last time we came. It's like a completely different beach. When people say it's one of the best beaches in, um, in the UK, they bloody mean it as well. It's just insane. And it's actually a really good surf beach. When the surf's up, it's incredible. Um, the, the waters are turquoise blue and it's, it's just a big expansive beach. It's just amazing. It can be very hard to leave, but onwards we must go. We decided to climb the huge sand dune back to the van, grabbing our last views of this epic beach before we leave. Okay, we're now on route to do the bit, the, the road that I've been dreading the most through the whole of this, because I know what it's like. We're doing it in the opposite direction. We've got a bigger vehicle. It's the road from Land's End, pretty much, to St. Ives and yeah I mean they're meant for horse and carts <laughs> back in the day so this should be really interesting here we go here we go this is it now Woo! <laughs> let's do it fingers crossed Very, 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 very pleased that's over actually. Um, it's nice to do it. It's the it's the, one of the most remote parts of um, the coastal Cornwall. So it's worth doing, it's beautiful, but I'm so glad it's over. But I've got to say how proud I am of our big green removals van for um, for doing that. You know, there's there's been, apart from a couple of occasions, we've been genuinely all right in, um, in Cornwall and lots of people told us not to even bother doing it. And, she, and he did it. I was like, he, she, he, she did it. <laughs> well done, Morgan. Well done, Morgan. Woo! Well <laughs> Proud parents we are. Proud parents. <laughs> and now we're going to leave him at church, you know, to yeah, say to... his prayers and all that sort of business. <laughs> I just say how beautiful you look today. Oh, thank you. It's so nice. <laughs> so we're heading down into St. Ives now. We had no intention of doing it today, um, but we're both quite hungry. We've not eaten anything today yet. It's almost two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so we're just gonna get a bite to eat down there because we think, think it's probably one of the better places to do that actually. And it's a really nice, I mean, it, they host, St. Ives does host some of the best beaches in the UK for sure. And, and in the whole of Cornwall, we don't even, we've not even seen half of them. So maybe we'll get a glimpse of those now. Whilst getting something to eat, it, is, it has to be said, it's one of the steepest and most difficult places to park um, so far. And if we drove Morgan down into St. Ives itself, um, and I was really conscious of doing that, um, we, there's very high chances we'd get stuck and not be able to get out. It's that tight down there. We did it in Frieda, and Frieda almost got stuck as well, so we're not gonna run that risk again. Anyway, we're in St. Ives now, so we're gonna go and enjoy ourselves. So off we went, heading into the beautiful coastal town of St. Ives. 100% touristy, bustling streets, a harbour and busy beaches, bars, restaurants, cafes and shops. We love to come here for the day and immerse ourselves in what it has to offer. Today, it's an all-day breakfast for Liam and a sandwich for me, before heading across the road and finally ordering something that you just have to get whilst in Cornwall. You can't come to Cornwall without having a cream tea, a vegan cream tea, and that's exactly what we're looking for right now. It's terrible for the diet, terrible. <laughs> there you are, thank you. Thank you. They look good. Should we go, should we go look, see what the, um, the vegan clotted cream's like? It's like pure coconut. Whipped coconut. No, it's not even whipped coconut, it's like desiccated coconut, mashed up with like... Yeah, it's weird. You wait to try it. It'll be nicer still. We ate our cream tea in this tiny little tea house. The scones were freshly baked, still warm, and were incredible. We chatted to the neighbouring tables who had the cutest dog. It's official. We just had our first Cornish cream tea of the year. And um, obviously it was completely vegan as well. Um, but I asked them, being a Cornish cafe, what, if it's jam before cream or cream before jam. And it is, of course, in Cornwall, jam before cream, which means in Devon, 
it's cream before jam. And for me, that does not make any sense whatsoever. I've got to admit, I'm sort of more on the side of Cornwall with that sort of argument. They obviously didn't want to get into too many politics about it, but I just said, just said logically, it makes more sense, does it not, to have jam before cream. Uh, yeah, it's a head scratcher. It's absolute chaos around here. There's blooming seagulls dive bombing chips on the floor. Um, there's so many people, but it's actually a really good atmosphere. So. And the beach is beautiful. We finished our afternoon in St Ives by the harbour on some deck chairs, followed by the beach before calling it a day. We both really love St Ives and still have more beaches to explore around the area, but this time around we decided to leave. Cool, we're back at this church uh, where Morgan has been all day resting in the shade. Uh, it's been hot and sticky in, in St Ives today and we're just about to leave and go and find a park up. But I just wanted to say how amazing it is to see Janine wearing dresses again. Not only does she look absolutely beautiful and stunning, she's also really happy. Um, this is the temperature that she likes. Janine must have Mediterranean blood or something like that because she's just not meant for cold conditions, cold and damp conditions, which is what made her suffer so much during the, the last winter. Um, so it's just really nice to see her wearing dresses again. And I'm so dedicated now to making sure she doesn't suffer anymore with being in cold, damp places because we've got the freedom of Morgan. You know, we're full-time van lifers, we're full-time travelers. And uh, I'm just, we're just gonna make sure that she doesn't have to go through that again. Yeah, the odd weekend, yeah, the odd week, um, but full-time life, there's nothing to say that she can't, at the moment, that she can't be in warmer places. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, but for now, we're gonna go north uh, to go and find a park up. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay guys, that's a wrap on today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing and commenting and all that sort of business. Uh, we'll see you next time because we're heading north into Cornwall. Yes, there's only one way out and that's north. We're having a great time and there's so much more to see. Um, but time is against us because the kids are gonna be breaking up from school. And just before I go, I wanted to give a huge shout out to EcoTree, the guys that provide our lithium batteries. As you can probably tell, we have no problems with them. They are absolutely fantastic. Um, and one of the best things about EcoTree is the support that they provide after you buy the batteries. So you're not gonna be left in the lurch when you buy them. They are incredibly nice people and we really recommend them. We'll leave a link in the description if you wanna go and check them out for yourself. And uh, we'll see you next time. I am king, surely I will need a queen and a ballad. Our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know
numb what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright